What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November, heading into the month of December here in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be taking a look at Tesla stock and talking about the Cybertruck kind of my opinions on it and we're actually going to jump into Tesla's website look at it a little bit more in depth and see how much it costs to actually buy a cyber truck as well as just breaking down you guys and degas and taking a look at natural gas's performance today so if you guys enjoy the video all I ask from you is to simply go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and join our strive smart discord group chat as well as our strive smart Facebook group both of those are linked down below. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my voice today, guys. I'm I'm a little coughed up here. So let's get into it. SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. This is currently up $5.75 right now with about 25, actually 20 minutes here um, left in the markets today on Friday, up 0.18%. And based on this chart, it's safe to say that the S S&P is slowly starting to creep back up here um, in route to this higher high to potentially retest that all-time high and make a new all-time high, right? And if we zoom in a bit to that five-day, five-minute, you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Remember in yesterday's video how we were talking about how this still looked bearish because it was trading below that 180 SMA? Well, the fact that we didn't dump off here and we actually broke out out, that's bullish now. The trend is reversing, especially now because we're ending off the day on a strong um, um, little swing here, right? And you can see if I draw this trend line over the past three days of trading, um, you know, especially if we hit a higher high here, which we probably won't, but it doesn't matter because it's still um, intact here. But again, over the past three days of trading, this pattern uh, of an uptrend has been forming. And now on Monday, next week, um, you know, the trading se uh, session next week, if we do something like this, then we can definitely expect a potential all-time high here on the S&P 500. That is if we shoot up here um, on, on Monday, right? So this is looking good, especially here heading into the close with about 20 minutes left in the markets. Going back to that four-hour chart or to it in the first place, um, we can see if that does end up gapping up, you guys can see that's the continuation of the uptrend. Um, we would have held the 50 SMA as a support, which is a good sign. So I'd just be watching the futures um, if I were you on Monday. And of course, any you know news that could affect the markets over the weekend here, I'd just be in tune with that. And if the large caps are pushing up on Monday, futures are up in green. And oh, actually on Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard, when we get to see the futures, if they're green, you know that could signify uh, or really identify a point that we may be going up on Monday. So let's break down the Dow Jones here guys <clears throat> it's currently up 91 points here 90 points right now up 0.32 percent and just like the s p if we go to that five day five minute yesterday we were talking about how this 180 suma was acting as a resistance and we could potentially dump from there and see a further sell-off but now since we broke out of that level we're actually holding it as a support making higher highs and higher lows out of that level of resistance, you know, the pattern's broken and now it looks bullish in terms of the trend. And if I draw this line, you'll be able to see it, right? We're, we're in this nice, beautiful uptrend channel at this point, it seems like, um, you know, so I'd watch and see Monday, do we gap up from here, continue to move up, hit a higher high. And if we do, if we zoom out to that one hour chart, you guys will be able to see, we'll be running back up and ultimately looking to test that 28,090 level which is an all-time high and we could potentially hit a new all-time high at that point on the Dow so this is looking good this is exactly what bulls want to 
see at this point, in my opinion, um, heading into the weekend. This is looking really bullish, uh, you know, in terms of the S&P and the Dow. Now, let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which on the flip side doesn't look as bullish. This one's actually red right now, down about four points, down 0.05%. And if we zoom in a bit to this five-day, five-minute, um, although we did break above moving average resistances, um, you know, partially last night and we tried to break out heading into the morning today you know the morning session ultimately we dumped after that and we're still downtrending based on this five day five minute chart right we're still making lower lows lower highs this right here which was at 4 a.m eastern standard was a lower high especially when we dumped uh, that pretty much solidified that and I guess you can say we are holding support at around 82.30, which could be a double bottom, maybe, you know, if we break out, if we break out, you know, here on Monday, that could be a good sign. But as of now, since we're still trending below those moving averages, the double bottom doesn't matter quite yet, right? So I just watched that on the five day, five minute. If we go back to that hour, uh, the hourly chart, you guys can see it even further. Um, you know, this is looking like a head and shoulders at the end of the day, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulders forming. Now, again, that 8230, 8240 level, if we dump below that, that's going to be very poor. Um, for the bulls out there. We may be seeing a lower level on the NASDAQ, but again, if this is just a double bottom, triple bottom breakout and we do something like this on Monday, expect... Uh, maybe an all-time high next week or maybe the week after because that would be a very, very bullish move. So now, guys, let's talk about what I did. Let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts in terms of uh, these markets, the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow. Are you chilling in cash right now? Are you buying stocks? Are you selling? What are you doing? Ray Dalio, actually, I saw an interesting article today in a little bit of a video. Uh, Ray Dalio is placing a $1 billion hedge against the markets um, that, that they could potentially go down, I believe, uh, by March. March, I think he has a billion dollar put expiring or something like that. So that's kind of interesting, um, you know, coming out of you know, one of the biggest investors out there, I guess, in today's corporate environment, right? So that's something to consider. Uh, you know, trade talks, of course, watching and, and just keeping up with the progress there. That's also important because I'd argue that's the biggest catalyst on the market right now, which could really push it higher or even lower if things turn sour. So those are just some things to keep an eye on here and just in your heads and in your thoughts heading into the weekend. So now let's talk about what I did. And I personally traded you guys today, guys. So we talked yesterday about this double bottom breakout pattern that was kind of formed heading into the close and the fact that we broke above that 50 SMA I believe I talked about this in yesterday's video um, the fact that we broke above it heading into the close of the market that was very positive for me heading into today's session right from yesterday's point of view now that we turned to today's session and we actually held the 50 SMA support pre-market and we actually started to run up from there this was extremely bullish to me guys so so I didn't take a position pre-market. I really should have now that I'm looking back, um, but I didn't. And once the market opened, guys, you guys ended up flying out of the gate. So we were kind of overbought um, when the market opened, and I was kind of scared to get in at that point in time. So I actually bought into the weakness a couple of hours later um, after the market opened and after we saw this big run. I bought into the weakness here. I believe it was into the 1480s, maybe 14. 1970s. I nibbled some shares. Then I ended up selling on this little high point here at about, I think it was like 1495 to about 1498. So that's what I ended up doing very quick, um, kind of buying into the weakness, selling after the pop um, in you guys today from about 1475 up. It was about like a 1.4% profit there on the day trade. I actually cut my losses in PayPal, guys. This is a stock that it's kind of a uh, 
it's kind of the one of those situations where you swing trade the stock, you're up a little bit, and then ultimately the trend completely reverses on you, and then you 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 sell it for a break even or a slight loss, which is what I did in this case, right? And 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 you know this this happened due to uh, kind of an unforeseeable you know circumstance. I think I think personally the stock has been falling due to their acquisition of that company that we talked about. They paid four billion. I, I believe the company's called um, Honey something. I forget off the top of my head. But ever since that acquisition, you know, PayPal stock's been dropping. And again, this is a risk you take when swing trading a stock, right? Looking back, I should have sold out here, but shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? I did not. I held on. I was up at this point. Um, I, honestly, I should have had a trailing stop. That was a poor move on my part. Um, but, you know, 102 is my my entry roughly um, up here I was up like a couple of percentage points and again I just broke uh, even not really break even I lost a little bit um, when the stock fell down here today but that's okay because all the other swings that I'm in are still doing pretty well right now Chipotle Mexican Grill McDonald's is one that's kind of just consolidating I'm waiting for the pop I'm down a little bit on this one but still feel comfortable holding it here um, I'm looking to see if it pops here but if we end up dumping heading into Monday. I'll be cutting that one as well. So these are just some stocks that I'm currently involved with and kind of what I did in today's session. So let's talk about that good old Tesla, guys. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about this. So Tesla, um, you know, TSLA is the ticker symbol. It was down 21 points. It's down actually because the market's still open. 21 points right now. It's down 6%. And I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on the Cybertruck before I give you guys my thoughts. So let me know down below in the comments right now. Please, I'd love to know what you guys have to think. So when I first saw this truck... Um, I was like, what are they doing? I was looking at this and I'm thinking to myself... This is way too futuristic for right now. This is definitely too niche of a of, of a truck. I don't know if a lot of people are going to buy it, but the truth is, guys, I've let it simmer in my mind a bit. I've been sitting on the truck all day, and the more I look at it, this is a pretty sweet-looking truck. If I were to change one thing, no, let me be honest with you guys. If I were to change one thing, take a look at this picture here. I would trim this part right off. If you guys follow my cursor here, I would trim this part right off. And, and take a look at it. Without that part, that's a pretty sweet-looking futuristic truck. Again, the more it sits in my mind, I'm like, wow, this is pretty, pretty sweet, especially for the performance of the truck. And let's actually scroll down a bit and take a look at it from different angles. So now from this angle, you're looking at it and you're like, ah, you know, it's not looking too sweet. And again, that's why I'd cut this portion right off. Uh, you know, what's, uh, you know, my cursor's following here. If we cut that off, I think it would look much better. But the way it is, it's like, okay, it's definitely something that is different and you have to get used to, right? So let's take a look at some of these specs. Cybertruck is built with an exterior shell mode uh, made for ultimate durability and passenger protection. This is what the shell looks like. Um, pretty, pretty cool there. Here's a picture of it on the road. And I think the lights, the, uh, the uh, what are these called? Um, the headlights, so those are pretty sweet. It's like a thin white line across. Um, I personally like that. If we look down here, this is a back shot of what the what the uh, uh, you know the uh, the loading ramp looks like and you can see how much storage you could potentially put on there. You can see the car driving, or rather the truck driving here, um, you know, in some sort of desert. That looks pretty cool. I'll be completely honest with you guys. So the storage, you get 100 um, cubic feet here in the back. Range, 250 miles for the single motor uh, rear-wheel drive. Um, you know, dual motor, all-wheel drive is going to be different, of course, and their speeds are also different from 0 to 60. So there's three different trucks here that you could get depending on your budget so if we were to order one you know click order now you can see okay you'd pay 100 bucks today it's fully refundable but you will be able to complete your configuration as production nears in late 2021 so guys you have to realize you're not seeing this truck for at least three years at this point at least two years at this point right 
right? Tri-motor all-wheel drive uh, production is expected to begin in late 2022. So that is like three years from now, two, three years from now. So I wouldn't expect to see these car or these trucks. They're not cars, the trucks on the road for another three, four years, probably. Right. So you can see here, 6.5, um, zero to 60, which is insane. And again, they're different for the different, um, you know, uh, types of cars here, you know, 4.5 seconds, zero to 60 for a truck. That's insane guys. And this one's 2.9 seconds, the tri motor, uh, motor all wheel drive. So these, you know, this truck is pretty, pretty sick. 14,000 pounds towing capacity, 500 miles range for this expensive, the most expensive one, which is $70,000. And if you think about it, guys, the Raptor, how much is the Ford Raptor off the top of my head? I'm trying to think, is that car a hundred grand? I don't think, or the truck, is it a hundred grand? I don't think so. I think the Raptor might be like 70, 80 K. So it's in line with what a Raptor would be. I'd be interested to see how much this would compare to that. Obviously the Raptor, there's no way it can go three seconds. Um, I'd be shocked if it does. So if we look at Tesla stock right now, guys, it's down 6% down 21 points and it's continuing to drop here, heading into the close of the market. So this tells me a couple of different things, right? Maybe people don't like the way that this truck looks. Maybe they don't like the specs of it. Also, we saw in the video, this guy really just smashed the windows of the cyber truck that were supposed to be bulletproof. So I don't know if that's really dragging down the stock, but it seems like in general, the stock is just dragging after this Cybertruck news, which gives me mixed signals. Uh, you know, it gives me the uh, a notion that investors and traders out there and just people in the community have mixed signals about this Cybertruck. So again, I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below. And in terms of Tesla stock, this could be a nice dip opportunity for anybody that wants to get in here on the momentum that we we've been seeing after their earnings report when they reported that surprise profit. So this is pretty much the, the, the biggest pull down um, that we've seen since that earnings report and probably even before that for some time now. So now's the chance to get in on the dip. And that's not me giving you advice to get in on the dip. But if you see potential to get in in Tesla, it's times of weakness where you should really strike on that opportunity. And now we're seeing that weakness. So we're down about, I'd say, 8% from that peak. Maybe it finds support here at around 320 to 330. That's where I'd personally look to pull the trigger. And honestly, I'm looking to pull the trigger potentially um, if it holds 322. And I'll probably give it a couple of days to wiggle out and find some support um, before actually entering into the stock. So another one that I want to talk about today, obviously, is you guys, like you guys saw in the title, did very, very well today, up 8%. So if you guys actually want to see a breakdown, further breakdown of my opinion on UGAS and DGAS and the natural uh, natural gas report, go check out yesterday's video. I'll also link that down below in the description box. But pretty much we had a withdrawal of 96 BCF billion cubic feet of natural gas yesterday. And ever since that report, we can see UGAS initially dumped. We can see it dumped down to about uh, 12.97, uh, 13 bucks, and from there it's been extremely bullish. So it seems like uh, the sentiment is slowly turning bullish right now um, in terms of you guys and D gas. Actually, just surrounding natural gas in general, it's turning bullish after that report, which is obviously uh, you know pushing you guys up here since it's up about 15, 16 percent since that bottom right after the report uh, was issued yesterday, which was on Thursday, and the report comes out every Thursday at uh, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if we go to natural gas, 
slash ng um, f20 the uh, january futures you can see this huge bullish move that we saw from about 261 up to 270 today this thing's up three percent right now and if we go to that 20 day one hour chart this is the bullish move that i was talking about in yesterday's video which is really what we need to see for the overall reversal in terms of a technical standpoint here to the upside on natural gas we're breaking that 180 sma very 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 good sign. We also broke 266, which we talked about in yesterday's video. Very, very good sign as well. And now it seems like we're holding 269, 270, um, you know, pretty much right now at the close of the markets on Friday, which is a good sign because that's where we held um, in terms of a support. We held that on the 1st of November before climbing up to $3 uh, in, in terms of the natural gas price. So overall, this is looking extremely bullish to me heading into the weekend. Am I holding you gas shares? No, because a lot of things can happen over the weekend. You know, who knows what the, the futures open up at on Sunday, but this is a good sign nonetheless for the bulls, for the natural gas bulls, and for the you gas people out there. So very quickly, guys, rapid fire, some other stocks I'm currently watching right now. CMG, of course, I'm, I'm in this one, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel. Um, you know, I'm really liking this one to, to fill up the gap to the 50, or rather the 180 SMA here at about 800 bucks. That's where I'm actually looking to sell my shares that I've been accumulating in the 750 level. Um, another stock I'm watching is at V here, guys, for uh, a break above this 180 SMA on the four hour chart. Um, we saw a dump today, which isn't too good of a sign, but overall, uh, you guys can see we're still holding a higher low here. So if we do get that breakout on Monday on this hourly chart, that could equate to a nice entry based on the four hour break, which would be above that 180 SMA. So that's another one that I'm watching. Um, of course, McDonald's, we don't need to talk about that because uh, we already kind of looked at it. I'm just waiting to see if it breaks up here. Uh, Facebook, I'm looking at this one as well for a potential fill up to 205 bucks. And really, that's it, guys. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know this video is long enough already. Let me know down below in the comments any stocks or ETFs that you want me to talk about in Sunday's video. Also, again, don't forget to let me know the comment in the comments what are your thoughts on the cyber truck. I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that and if you want to be further connected with the community the strive smart discord links down below the facebook links down below as well so i'll catch you all in the next video don't forget to like and subscribe peace out